Hello, guys. It's Kine once again. All right. Welcome, guys. Today, we shall be looking at a problem we'll be solving with Python, right? It is a problem involving numbers. We'll try to get the lowest common multiple of a group of numbers. So that's something called LCM, right? Okay, so let me just share my screen and um, show us how to solve such um, a problem. Now, the LCM is lowest common multiple, right? And how do we get this um, number, this particular multiple? You find here that first, I'm going to use the factorization and um, prime fact factorization method. And that entails getting all the prime factors of those numbers, right? The numbers that we are giving. And having found the prime factors, we look for the common prime factors, you know? So say I have A and B as the numbers, I'll get all the, all the prime factors of A and all the prime factors of B. Then I'll get the common factors, you know, between A and B. Now those um, factors, those prime factors are not to be repeated. So no duplicates, you know, in the first instance. Now, using those prime factors, I will now check how many times each one of those prime factors occurs like in all those numbers. And I'm going to get the highest occurrence. So if, for example, I have A and B and two is a common factor, you know, a, a common prime factor between A and B, I'm going to check how many times does two occur in A and how many times does two occur in B. Now, if two occurs in A three times, but occurs in B only two times, then I'm going to take the one in A, that is where two occurs three times. That is the larger one you know, of the two. So I would simply have um, that prime factor, which is two, raised to the power of its occurrence, its greatest occurrence. So that will simply be two raised to the power of three. Then if three is a prime factor between A and B, I'll take the three again and check in which of the, um, in which number, like this, the prime factors that make up that number, in which one do we have the greatest occurrence of three? So if the greatest occurrence is in A, I'm gonna count how many times it occurs. So if for example, um, three occurs three times, in A, but occurs four times in B. I'm going to take four times, and that will be three raised to the power of four. So having got those um, exponents, I will now multiply um, all the results, those different um, um, numbers derived. So guys, this is what we are seeing. So right here, I have all the prime factors of 60, so I want to find the LCM of 60 and 90. And then here are all the prime factors of 90. So I'm going to ask myself now, taking two, now you know two occurs in 60 and in 90. So I'll take two and ask myself, in 60, how many times does two occur? Two occurs two times in 60, but occurs only once in 90. So I'm going to take this where it occurs two times. So that would that was simply be two, raised to the power of two. That's what this means here. Two raised to the power of two. Then I would look at this again, guys. Now three is a prime, is a common prime factor, right? So three occurs in 60 and in 90. Now how many times does three occur in 60? Only once. But it occurs twice in 90. That is two times. So that's why I have here three raised to the power of two, right? And I um, save the answer. Then I would come back here. I have another prime, common prime factor, that is five. And I'll ask myself, how many times does five occur in, in 
60, it occurs once, and how many times does it occur in 90? It occurs once. So that would simply just be five raised to the power of one. Because in both numbers, it occurs once. So that would be five raised to the power of one. So I'll do the math. Two raised to the power of two is four. Three raised to the power of two is nine. So that would be four times nine, 36. And then five raised to the power of one is five. Then 36 multiplied by five, you know, that gives us 180. So guys, the prime, the lowest common multiple of 60 and 90 is 180. And we have used the prime factorization method. So I don't want to dwell so much on that. Let's go to our IDE. Okay, guys, um, sorry about that. I should come here. Now, guys, um, I should create a list to hold the numbers, right? So I'm just going to call this um, L just for list. Then in that I will, so let's take this one here. Let's get this number that is 60 and 90, right? So I'm going to take 60 and 90, great. So we, we expect to get 180 at the end of it, right? So having done that guys, I am going to get the prime factors of 60 and the prime factors of 90. So how do I do that? It's simple, I'm going to use a loop, right? So guys, I'm going to create an outer loop. I mean, an outer list rather. And initialize that to an empty list. Then I would use a for loop. So for i, that is i is like the number at that particular iteration. So i in L, right? So the first iteration, I will be 60. Second iteration, I will be 90. So that's what that means. Okay. So guys, next I'm going to do is create a temporary variable. So that temporary variable will hold all the prime factors of 60, which it will supply to this outer list. And then when it comes the second time from this for loop, then the temporary list, rather not the variable, let me call it a list. The temporary list will hold all the prime factors of 90, which it will later um, on, which it will later unload into the outer list. So let me create that inner list. I'm just going to call it inner list. And for now, set it to empty, an empty list, right? So guys, what's the next thing? I'm going to now create a loop, but this time I'm going to use a while loop. So just, guys, just look at this, guys. So while, now, guys, I need to create a divisor. That is a number that I will use to keep dividing, say, 60. So beginning from 2. So I'll use 2 to divide 60. What I get, I'll try to use 2 to divide that result. So I'll keep using the same divisor until it's no longer possible to use it. That is until there's a remainder after the operation. Then I'll go to the um, next higher number. So, you know, I started with two as a divisor. Then I'll climb to three. And I'll start dividing, you know, the result again. For every um, division operation, I'll use three. And afterwards, I'll use three until three is no longer able to divide the you know the results and then i will move to four so that's what i'll keep doing until this particular number is reduced to zero do you understand guys so that's why i'm using a loop here so before that I, let me create that device so i'm just going to call it dv mm, just I, I, I should just call this dv here and i'm going to set it to two so great guys while dv is less or equal to it's less than or equal to i. You know that this i stands for a number in this, in this my list, right? So while say two is less than 60, then I'm going to carry out a check, okay? So I would say if, now if i, when divided by dv, which for now is two, gives no remainder, that is a remainder of zero, 
which means it is a factor. So dv is a factor of i. Then I can go ahead to carry out the division. Okay. So that will simply be i divided by dv. Okay. So now i has been reduced to a new value. And that new value I will restore in that variable i. So I keeps reducing each time there's a division, I reduces, I reduces until I is you know no longer um, greater than dv. Then that loop breaks. Okay, so the next I'm going to do, guys, is to now having done the division and reduced i, I need to now append that dv. This is a factor of i. I'm going to now store it in my inner list. So I'm going to have this inner list and append dv. I'm going to append dv here simply by doing this using the append method. Right. So guys, now what if what if dv is not a factor of i? That is, if there's a remainder, then I know that oh, I can't use dv anymore because it's not a factor. Right, so I need to increase the div divisor that is two now to three if it's no longer possible to use two. So coming here, okay, guys, I need to put the colon. So I'll come down here in an else else block and simply increment dv. So dv would simply be an addition of one to it. So if I had dv, I add one to it, a new value results. And that new value is stored back in dv. And that's that's that, guys. So let's see if we have all the factors of you know each of these two numbers in separate lists. Okay, so now let me print. All right, the one thing I will do first before I print is to now um append the inner list. So containing all the factors of one number, say 60 all the factors, prime factors of um, 60. So that will be offloaded here in my outer list. So I'm going to bring the outer list and append the inner list. So what I've created now is a list of lists where the sub list contains all the factors of one number. Okay, so now let me print outer list and see if we have what we expect. Right, so guys, remember we had 60 and 90. So let's multiply these factors, two times two, four, four times three, 12, 12 times five, 60, so that's right. Then here, two times three, six, six times three, 18, 18 times five, 90. So yeah, guys, we have, uh, list containing prime factors. Now, the next thing we want to do, guys, is to get unique prime factors. So we have to get, say, two. Since two is a, two is a factor, a common factor between this list and this list. So I'm just going to take only one of it, you know, a unique one, two, no duplicates. Then have a way of getting another factor, three, and since five is also a common factor of five, so I expect to have two and three and five. So that will be the next step in our journey to LCM. So before I do that, I'm going to create a, I'm going to define a function. So I'm going to call this um, the union, just name it the union. What I'm simply going to do is to just um, merge these two, these two in a, in a list into a set. And you know, sets do not allow duplicates. Remember, please go back to our lesson on sets. Okay, so you need to learn one so that you can apply in another. That's the whole essence of you know learning. So um, go back to that video on sets, and you'll see that sets do not allow duplicate values. So when I use the set method called union, it will simply just discard extra. Um, those duplicates just it just does away with them. Okay, so I'm going to call this the, the union, and it takes two arguments x and y. 
right? The parameters, the X and Y, actually. So the next now, guys, is to um, convert the each, I mean, convert each of the lists to a set, right? So I'm going to have sets. Just use the set constructor there. And what is the list? That is the parameter here. So remember that this is a list and this is another list. So I want to merge or um, create a union of X and Y. So set X dot union. So X is now a set union and it takes you know takes one parameter and that is another set there and that set is y so i've converted the list y to sets to a set which is now set x i mean set y all right so guys next is to yeah now store it in a variable so i'll just call this set edge well i uh, don't mind and there's not like set it but i'm just going to use that right so so that has been <laughs> turned to a set. I'll just call it seted anyway. So guys, I now need to, yeah, please, I need to come back here because the user, the user may not uh, put the, the numbers in order. So I'm just going to sort here first before I start. So sort my numbers by calling the sort method on this um, list. Then the same thing here, having got my, my uh, merged set. I'm going to first convert, reconvert to a list. You know, I converted a list to a set, then merge two of those sets, and I need to convert that result back to a list. So I'm going to call, use the list constructor for everything. And that's it, guys. It's as simple as that. Now, I will just um, sort. Okay, so that's it. That's been sort, sorted, right? Okay, so that's it, guys. I've um, just got unique unique prime factors using this um, function here, okay? Now, guys, let's now use the function in a loop. That's the next thing we want to do now. So I'm going to say for A in I'm going to go back to my outer list. So I'm going to call my outer list for A in len outer list. Now, of course, I can't just use len in the for loop. I need to use the range method. So I'm going to call range here, just as simple as that. Okay. So what do I want to do, guys? Remember that I want to take each of the sets, I mean, each of the lists in this outer list, right? And um, check, look for a way of, of merging the set before it and that particular one. So the set before and the one that follows it, I'm going to actually merge the two of them to get a simple, I mean, to get a single set that will contain no duplicate value. So that's what I want to do. So I will start. Yeah, guys, please, just a moment. I'm going to create a PEM list here. No, 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 not here. All right, sorry guys, I will just continue down here. So I'm going to create something like to show me, um, to tell me when I am at the first iteration. So I'm going to simply call that just um, F, first iteration or F1, first iteration and set it to zero, okay? but I'm going to use it much later. So now I am going to say if, A, I mean, sorry, if F1 
is equal to zero. That is the first iteration. Now, because it's the first list I'm taking, you know, because it's the first list, I cannot compare it to another list because I don't have the other list. There's no list uh, that, no list has gone ahead of the first one. So that's why there won't be any uh, merging, okay, at the first iteration. So I'm just going to have a variable that I'll call say MM, whatever, I'm just coming up with stuff here. And just set MM to the first um, list in my, you know, a bucket of lists. So that will simply be outer list at A. Just as, I mean, outer list at F1. So this will now be the first, the first list here stored in MM. All right. Now, what if it's not the first um, list? So it might be the second or the third. What do I do now? I would now um, call this method, this function, to merge the two. That is that current one and the one that had gone before it, right? So it will simply be MM, the union. So remember, two, two um, parameters it will take. So what, what are the two parameters? The first will be the this particular um, list here, this first one stored in MM, right? So MM, and the second one will now be the list at that um, at that point. So simply grab it by its index. So outer list at index what now? Index index A. I hope we understand it, guys. All right. So having done that now, I am at index A. That is the first, the first index. So I will just come down here. And, I, and there has to be a way of incrementing my F1, right? How do I increment F1? So I will just simply have F1 and plus equal 1. And that's as simple as that. So what is he saying here? MN can be undefined. So why is that? Outer list range in A. Okay, so I had to just uh, keep that MM, initialize it outside. So let's see what MM returns. So if I print, just print MM, I'll see what it gives us, guys. No. Oh. Guys, what a silly mistake. I don't need to do this. All right, so guys, um, I need to return. That was quite, um, I don't know. So I need to return set it. So this particular function, this particular function returns a value and that value is set at the list. It returns a merged list. Do you understand? So that's what it's going to return there, return set it, okay? All right, so let's see.
Okay. All right. So that's it, guys. I hope we understand so far. We forgot to return a value here. And that was the problem. So having done this now, printed, and we'll see that the unique values, the unique prime factors have been what? Grabbed and stored in this variable, this list variable called mm. Now the next thing, now we know those prime, now that we know the prime factors and we have taken you know, unique ones among them, no duplicates. We don't need to run through each of those um, unique prime factors. So for each one, we will count how many times it occurs in our lists, in each of the lists within the what? The parent list. So let's say we have two lists in the parent list, list A and list B, and we take two. So I'm going to check how many times those two occur in list A and how many times those two occur in list B. We take the highest count, right? And then that highest count would make it the exponent. Like, so it will now be two raised to the power of the highest count of two in that uh, parent list. And then we save it. So that's how we grab all, all those unique values multiplied by, I mean, uh, raised to the power of the number of time each of them occurs. Okay, so now guys, to do that, I'm going to come down here and I will have create a list that I will call fem list, that is permanent list, set it to an empty list, right? And then I'm going to use a for loop. So for, for X in, I'm using MM, right? You know, I want to run through each unique prime factor, that is two, three, and five. So for X in MM, what should happen? Then I'll create a, a temp list, right? A temporary list there. So temp list and set it to an empty list. Okay, so then having done that now, I'm going to now take each um, number in, the list that is this unique uh, prime factors and run through all the um, sub lists. Okay, so I'm going to create a, a for loop there, an inner for loop. So for, let me not make this X since I already used X somewhere. So I should just say Y, yeah. So for Y in MM, right? Then this should be Z. So for Z in, I'm going to use outer list, the outer list there. Okay, so for Z in outer list, that would simply be it. So what do I do now? I am now going to count. So I'll grab that list in succession, count how many times Y why or cause and i will just get the max count so i'm going to use the max method here okay so let's go guys um z is my list there right now z and i'm going to z dot what method is that i'm going to use here guys i'm going to use the count method of the list um, em class, right? So z dot count, and what do I want to count? I want to count y, how many times y occurs. So just like that, right? Now, now that I've, I have um, got it, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to append it. I'm going to append the count of y in this temp list, right? So. That will simply just be um, temp, temp list dot append, right? And just like so. Okay, so yeah, guys, having done that now, we've, I've, so I've counted how many times 
Y occurs in each sub list of my outer list, right? So it's now saved in temp list, right? Now the next thing I want to do is to find the maximum count of Y across those sub lists. So I'm going to call the count, the, ten, the max method and store it in a variable. So I'm going to just have max with double X there and call the just MAX max, the max method and give it my temp list as, as um, sorry, this should come here. So when it has collected the count in all, the count of Y in all the sub lists, then it should now look for the maximum count. So that's why this should be here at this level. So max templates that will be stored in this max. Then the last that will now happen is that that maximum count should now be stored in this my permanent in this my permanent um, list, right? Okay. So and before I do that, guys, I I do not just want to store the max. I want to do the calculation before storing it in my perm list. And what calculation is it? I want to get this y raised to the power of its occurrence, the, its greatest occurrence. So if two has occurred uh, the most in a particular list, so it will be two raised to the power of that count in that list, the highest count. So that's what I want to do with this max. So this max is just the max count, right? I'm going to do the math here now and simply let me call this computed, just computed. And that will just be um, max, which is the highest count, right? But I'm going to have it as the exponent. So I'm going to use the power, the power method there. And the power, we, th we take two, um, arguments, that is the number itself, which is y in this case, and raised to power what? Raised to the power of the highest count of y in this case, which is max, right? Okay, so that's that. Those are the two arguments there. Right, this our system may not, um, the um, Python may not know what power is as of now. So we need to import the math module right at the top here. So we should just do that from math import power, just like that. Okay, so I've imported power and then I can use it here, right? That's computed. Then finally, I'll just store computed in my PEM list. So PEM list, dot append and just store the computed value, right? Okay, so now let's see what we have in our PEM list. Print PEM list. Great, so, so we have four and nine and five. Okay, so I suppose this is two and two occurs the, the most like two times. That is like two raised to the power of two, that's four. Then three occurs the most two times. So let's go back to our word documents. You see how many times does three occur? Like the most, that's in 90, three occurs two times. Do we see? That's why we have three raised to the power of two. All right, so that gives us this nine and five raised to the power of one is still five because five occurs once in all those sub lists. So we're right on track. Now the final thing to now um, get to the LCM is to multiply all the values within this list. I'm going to do this in three ways. So I'm going to um, explain something here. How do we multiply values in a list? First, I'm going to use the new uh, math method called prod, which is like 
I, I believe it stands for product. Okay. So if you are using Python from, I think 3.8, I won't be too sure, I can't be too sure anyway. 3.8, I think you should be able to just from math there get the fruit. I, I believe from 3.8, Python 3.8. So let's use it, guys. So I'm just going to say LCM there and just have um, prod from the math module there, prod. And what do I want? I'll just supply the list and the list is this PEM list, right? So that will just multiply all the values in PEM list. And that is the LCM. So I'm just going to print LCM. Okay, so let's see, 180, great. So uh, if you don't need a floating point number, let's just convert that to an integer value. Well, let me just do it here. This prod converts it, everything that I get after the prod returns its value, make it an integer. Okay, so that's 180. That's the first way, right? Now, um, I'm going to comment this. I want to use another method. That is um, the NumPy library. I'm going to use NumPy and the prod method of the NumPy library there. So I'll call this import NumPy as an alias, NumPy as MP, which is like the convention in terms of naming. So that's it, NumPy as MP. Then LCM will be NP dot the prod. And again, it takes the argument there, which is the list. So that's, that's what I would just call the PEM list, right? The PEM list. And what do we have? 180. So that's the same thing. If you want to just make this an integer, just get the int. Int method there and that gives you that, that will give you an integer value. Let's not dwell on that. Now again, I'm going to comment this and use the third method there, which will require um, reducing all those values, reducing three values into one value, right? by multiplying all the values to get one item. So I'm going to get the, from the form to class there. So I'll say from, guys, watch this, from form tools, function, function tools, right? From form tools, import, reduce. So, so that I'm able to reduce, you know, um, separate values into one. Then I am going to also do this. So from operator, this allows us to use um, operators as, as um, in a way, it, it gives us the, the functionalities of, the, of our typical arithmetic operator, for example, because I want to use the multiplication operator. Okay, so from operator, import mode, which is multiplication, okay? So that's, that, that will enable us to carry out multiplication, you know, of those three, three or two or three values. In this case, I have two values that I want to get the LCM of, but that has been reduced to, to, to three, right? To three numbers. So multiplying those three numbers, right? So LCM would simply be, I'll call the reduce method and the parameters here, the multiplication operator, then the list, which is the PEM list, the list whose values I want to multiply and one. Now the one there is important, just in case there isn't like a value no error should be raised. It doesn't raise an error. So that's why I'm, I'm having this one here. Okay, so let's 
see what it gives us, guys. So that still gives us one easy. All right, so I think, guys, we've come to the end. Let's try another list just to be sure. So this time, let me comment this out. Now, L should be, say, um, 15. Or let me say 10, 15, and 20. That's my list. And if I run this, what's the LCM? So we can see that the lowest common multiple, that is, what's the lowest number that is divisible by 10, 15, and 20? You would agree with me that it is 60. 60 is the lowest number that is divisible by 10, 15, and 20. Well, if I had 96, let's say 96, and this year should be um, 144, and I should call this 180. So what would that number be now? Let's run this. So that gives us 1,440, that's quite large. So, but I think, let me use, let me use, um, from here, one, three, two, and one, four, four. Let's see. Wow, 3,100, that's quite large. But, okay guys, so I hope we learned something. I am so happy that we got to do this it takes a while, you know, even for me, you just have to think, even for me, the thinking was something I had to do and I keep doing. And that's what programming is. It's about thinking, all right? So it's not about being a genius. It's just your ability to look at a problem, break down the problem. That is, you know, do the composition of the problem and then, you know, build it up from there until you get your final solution. Okay, so I'm happy guys, and I'll say goodbye at this point. See you in my next video, bye.